Hello everyone. In this video I want to teach you how to use a React library called Style Components. Essentially it allows you to write plain CSS into your JavaScript files. Uh, there is a lot of advantages of using this library, which I will tell you more about them later in the video. I use this library for most of my React projects and in my opinion it makes my coding way easier and my code look more professional as well. So without any further ado, let's get started with, with coding. To start off, type in npx create react app and then the name of your project. In my case, I'll just type style components. Now you just need to write cd and the project name you have created. So in my case, it will be style components again. And now uh, I can write code. Dot, and it's going to open Visual Studio code for me. So in here I want to remove some unnecessary files, I don't want app.css, test, index, logo, vitals and tests. In my index.js I also want to remove that and all of that. Now in my app I need to remove logo and app.css. I want to remove everything in my code base here as well and I will just return simple test. Uh, now I want to my open my terminal in my Visual Studio code and I want to type in yarn start. Oh, okay. Yarn start. Right now I have an error, that's because in my index.js I have accidentally uh, deleted my import for app.js, so I'm gonna return it and save it. So normally when you style something in React, you just use CSS files and you select your class name of your component of your element and then you style your class name. Uh, however, using style components, we can just import styled from style components and we can create our own components. Uh, so I want to create a component called container and I, I can create it by using style.diff and then we surround this with our quotation marks. And we can use a uh, pure CSS in here. So if I want to have a mean width, I can just use mean dash width. Uh, that's quite cool because we normally when you define CSS in your JavaScript file, you have to use um, mean uppercase width, like in inline styles, but this is not the case for style components. And I want to have a padding of, let's say 50 pixels and a margin of zero. So in your CSS file, normally you would write a container and then you would select dot .container in your app.css. Uh, however, using style components, we can just turn this diff into a container and remove that here. So now we can see that we see the padding right here and all the styles have been applied. And if we inspect, uh, inspect this element, we can see that this is a normal diff. And inside this diff, we have uh, two class names. One class name is this gzvc and this class name is essentially defining our style com styles. You can see that it's matching our styles in our container right here. That's how style components work essentially. Uh, you can also style children of your style components. Uh, so for example, for example, if I wrap this in h1, oh, sorry, uh, wrap this in h1, damn, I'm being really bad, and pass and test in here. Let's name it my channel. Uh, so we can see H1 here, it's being selected and it's uh, black. What I can do is to go H1 like that and I want the color to be red and text align to center. It's not purely centered, that's because it's not 100%. So now it's supposed to be centered. Now you can see that this is centered and there's also some padding of 50 pixels and the color is red. That's how you can select child components. You can also select pseudo elements if we uh, add n% percent and then hover, we can say that I want the background color to be blue. Uh, so when we can hover, background color is blue. Okay, now we can remove all that because it's unnecessary. Another cool thing about style components is that you can pass props to it. So let's create a new component. Uh, let's call it header and it's going to be uh, h1. Inside this header we'll have a... Inside this header we'll have a color. Oh my god, why are you typing? Inside this header we have a color and this color will be defined using uh, our props. So essentially, 
because this is a quotation mark and in JavaScript you can write a vanilla JavaScript using uh, this dollar sign and curly braces and we can pass like one statement we can say that hello world and whenever we turn this header into now f.js header here we start our app and let's go to our console we can see that hello world has been printed so we can actually use do vanilla javascript inside our style components so what i want to do now is to say my color to be uh, a functional component and then inside the functional component i want to pass props uh, and inside this props i want the color to be i want i want i, know, I want this to be this color and now in my header i can just say color red and we can see that this is actually being read. Uh, okay, uh, I want this props to be destructured as well, so that it is my code is more readable. I can destructure it, and I can just say color to be color. Normally, uh, what I do is to have a default value always. So sometimes I'll just have it as an empty string. Sometimes I'll just have it as blue. So. Um, Oh yeah, sorry, it has to be a ternary operator, so first it will go color and then it will be blue. So normally I do that and whenever I pass my color it will be uh, it will be passed as a color and whenever I don't pass a color it will be blue default it will be blue by default. Uh, also normally you don't store you know you don't store your style components in the same folder as your normal components. You normally need to create a folder called global styles or your component.styles and then you create uh, you just copy all of that here and paste it in here we're gonna export all of that and we're going to import it in our app.js import container and header not style components but global styles my mistake here Another cool property of style components is inheritance. So let's say I have this div here. I'm not going to export it. It's just going to be a simple default div, uh, which is going to be inherited by a lot of our components. Let's say I want to create a container called row, and it's going to be a simple flex box with uh, flex row and justifying aligned properties. But I also want my padding to be defined and my padding bottom and also and so on and so on. So I want this to be my styled and inherited from default div and just like that we have a row that is essentially inheriting all of this from here uh, but we can also override some properties for example i can override display to be flex and i want justify content to be also dynamic so i want to copy that replace that with justify we're going to copy that again, change that to align items and change this justify to align. Same thing I can do with column. Uh, I can copy that, change that to column. Uh, I'll leave that as it is. Uh, the only thing that will change is my flex flow. My flex flow will be uh, column. Now in my app.js I want to import my column and row and I'll add that here, I'll add row, uh, it's taken a while, and then I want to have two columns. Uh, you can't see anything, that's because my width by default is nothing, uh, so I'll just go in my global styles and uh, I will overwrite my width. So for my row, I want my width to be 100% and for my column, I want my width to be uh, 100 pixels and my height to be 100 pixels as well. So I'll just do that. And what I'm going to do is to pass my background color. So let's say I want this background to be um, green. And for my other column, I want my background to be yellow. 
Let's pass my background property to my row as well, and I want this to be blue. So now we can see that this is my row, uh, and I want my height to be, let's say, uh, 200 pixels instead. Um, in my global styles, I can just, yeah, I didn't define my height, so it can be, yeah. So this is my row, and inside my row I have two columns uh, of 100 pixels width and 100 pixels height. And essentially this row is <coughs> being defined right here, and we can see that this background color is being defined. We, we didn't have any background in here, but we have inherited our default div, which has our background color defined right here. Essentially when we pass props to our row here, it'll be passed to our default div as well, and we can define our background color. Uh, we can also define our overridden style, so we can justify and align, align items. Uh, so in my app.js, I can just say justify to be center and align to be center too. And now we can see that our item is in, in, the, in the center here. Uh, next, I want to tell you about uh, Vim provider from style components. So in my app.js, I want to import Vim provider from styled components. And I want to define an object called Vim. And I'll just say color to be purple. And I'll define a font size um, to be just six frame. I'll wrap everything with my Vim provider. Uh, and then you can see that uh, there's an error here. That's because we need to pass our Vim prop right here. And essentially what it does here is every single style component that is inside Vim provider will be having props Vim. So in my global styles I have a container and header. Let's say I want to console log something else. So I'm going to uh, have my Vim in here. And in my Vim I want to print Vim.color. Restart, let's see in our console, it's purple. Obviously, we don't want to print this, we want to uh, actually apply it. So in here, instead of a color, we're going to pass in theme, and we're going to replace this with theme.color. And we can see that our color is now purple. So what's the point of this uh, theme provider? Essentially, it allows you to modify all of your style components in here uh, by theme, and essentially all you need to do is just to change one object instead of uh, going into every single of your component props and changing them manually yourself. I find that quite convenient. Uh, next, I want to tell you about global styles. So for that, I'm going to go into my globalstyles.js and I'm going to import uh, create global style from style components. Uh, I'm going to create a new style component called global style. And this time it's going to be different how I'm, how I'm going to define it. At this time I'm going to say create global style uh, quotation marks and we can write PUCSS in here. So in here I can just say I want to select every single HTML element and I want margin to be zero, I want padding to be zero and I want border box to be zero as well. We're going to save that and we're going to export that as well. So export default global style. Sorry for the typos, my keyboard is being really quitchy. So in my app.js, I can import my global style as a default uh, as a default import. So it's going to be outside the brackets. And all I can do is just say global style here. And it's going to be applied to every single element uh, inside my Vim provider, essentially. All of its uh, siblings will be having our global style properties. It doesn't have to be inside a Vim provider, it can be a simple uh, fragment as well. Uh, fragment here. So we can see that our margin has still uh, is still the same. I'm going to return my Vim provider though. So now that we have talked about uh, usage of style components, let's, take about, let's talk about the advantages. Uh, first of all, uh, the advantage I find uh, really nice is uh, we don't need to use class names. Personally, I don't like writing class names and then writing some 
uh, with names for class names like red, blue, one, active, desi active, and active. Uh, it kind of discloses sometimes bugs or uh, unwanted behavior. Another thing is it's really simple to be dynamic. As I said, style components are JavaScript and you can use vanilla JavaScript inside of them. So let's say I want to like console log something to debug something or I want to pass a dynamic property over color or padding. It can all be done with uh, style components. Another thing is its reusability. So as you can see here, I have used a default diff right here and I have used it twice for my row and for column. And obviously uh, another thing that I like about it is it's pure CSS in a way. Uh, for example, in my inline styles, I have to define it differently if we, when I defined const style. And I want to define a mean width. I have to do mean width like that without a dash because dash is reserved for JavaScript as a minus sign. What about the disadvantages of using style components? Well, uh, there are a few disadvantages. Performance is obviously one of them. Using pure CSS is always faster, but I think it's a small sacrifice uh, considering that you will have such a fast development approach. Uh, another personal disadvantage that I find uh, is using Emmet. So for example, when I wanna use CSS, I can just say P1 and it's going to be padding one pixels or M1, it's going to be margin one pixels. Also, I wanna select, for example, color red and we can see this little square and we have a color palette and we can select the color whatever, whichever we want. However, using global styles, because we're using a JS extension, it doesn't allow us to use Emmet. So we can't just say P1 and it's going to uh, auto create padding one pixels for us. No, it's not. Uh, then I also can't uh, choose colors. So if I say color red, uh, there's not a square that allows me to change the color palette. Lastly, I just want to say that I have two videos on my YouTube channel where I build uh, websites using style components. If you want to practice using style components, uh, these videos will be for you. I will leave a link in the description below. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.